Good morning, Merry Christmas. I just got to my mom's house. It is 823 and we are gonna roll out the cinnamon rolls that the dough that we made yesterday. This has just been sitting in the refrigerator. I've got some butter here. When I make cinnamon rolls, I don't like the butter to be completely melted. So it's soft and spreadable. Cinnamon, brown sugar. We're gonna get going on these cinnamon rolls and then we're gonna make rolls. Good morning, I'm just unloading the dishwasher. My dad is actually running to the store to pick up an <laughs> another thing we forgot. Everyone is gonna be here around 11.30ish and we're gonna eat breakfast as soon as they get here. And so I wanted to get here in time to get these cinnamon rolls made so that they can prove. Oh, it looks lovely. Yeah, it's beautiful dough. Beautiful New dough. New yeast was yeah. the key. Yeah. You can tell I don't do a lot of yeast baking. If you weren't here yesterday, my mom's yeast was fairly expired. And so we sent my dad to the store to get some new yeast because you don't want to show up on Christmas morning and realize that your yeast is dead. And so he went ahead and picked up some new yeast for us. So this is my favorite cinnamon dough recipe, the dough portion. And we're just going to make cinnamon rolls out of it. I think what I'm going to do is cut it in half and I'm going to only work with half of it at a time. This is a cool recipe because you can make the dough the day before, actually up to a couple days before and just have it in the fridge ready for you when you want to make your cinnamon rolls. I have tried to make this recipe where I make the dough and then I roll out the cinnamon rolls and put that in the refrigerator, but I haven't had good luck with that when the dough is cold going into the oven, I can't get the cinnamon rolls to cook all the way through. So in the morning, I've just found it's best to make the dough the night before, in the morning roll them out, and make the cinnamon rolls. Oh, here, that's what I'm looking for. So I'm just gonna take a second here to roll out this dough into a rectangle as best as I can. So now that we have this rolled out to a good thickness, I'm gonna take my butter. I actually think I'm gonna melt it just a little bit more. I don't like it runny. And we're gonna spread the butter over the dough. I don't measure any of this pour part. I just kind of put a layer of butter and sugar and just go with it. And then we need to make some rolls after this. So as soon as we get these rising, we're gonna make some rolls. Okay, that looks like a good amount of butter. It's a nice layer. I probably put about a half a cup on there. And then we'll sprinkle cinnamon. And then we're gonna put brown sugar. You could do brown sugar or white sugar, whatever you prefer. This morning I did some of the party prep as well. I got the three tables set. Oh. Although we have to reset the breakfast table because you know the smaller group of the nuclear family will do breakfast and then I'll reset it for the for dinner for the guests. I got the serving platters out and labeled, and I put them where my coffee usually goes, back there, and I moved the coffee over to the baking counter uh, behind Becky, because I I'll think that would work better for the number of people that we have, and I needed a staging space for the serving platters. So my mom and I, if you missed it, yesterday we made all the sides for tonight's big dinner. We're having a big dinner after breakfast. And then my sister is making the main and she's also making a bunch of bread products too. And so it's gonna be a big feast. But my mom and I didn't have to make the main dish because my sister is doing that. Oh, and I just got a text from her and she said she's glad she decided to brown sear the meat first at her house and start it because it took her a full hour to sear it to, yeah because you can't crowd it in the pan so it would have been um we'd have been, yes <laughs> and we would have been stepping on one another in the kitchen while we are uh preparing and cooking the appetizers they're all prepared but we have to cook them We're, she's making beef burgundy and she's going to braise it in a dutch oven so she's going to start that at her house 
It'll probably be about half done and then she's gonna bring it here and we'll finish it here in the oven for dinner. My mom's gonna go ahead and roll out the second one since I have the first one ready to go here. And we're just gonna use some foil pans. We already used all of my mom's glass ones. I was supposed to bring a couple, but that was one thing I forgot this morning. And so we're just gonna use some disposable ones, which will actually be nice because it'll make clean up on Christmas that much easier. So I do like to butter the bottom just so that nothing sticks here and my favorite thing to do when it comes to making some rolls is actually cutting them out. I find it very, very satisfying. So I'm going to go ahead and butter this one because we're definitely we're probably going to need all three of these. This makes a lot of some rolls. Yeah, I lost one of my 9 by 13s. We did a shopping trip mm -hmm. at Costco and remember those beautiful white uh, an oval and a rectangle with the lid that also served as a tray that we showed everyone at Costco. Well, I bought a set, but last party, the uh, nine by 13 white ceramic black one bit the dust. Bit the dust. That happens. Should I do three here, mom? Three? Uh, yeah, three. yeah. I do have a measure if you want to actually measure of them, if you're that technical. No. <laughs> I shouldn't have asked that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, if I don't have to. I just love cutting cinnamon rolls. It's like the most satisfying. These are going to be pretty healthy sized cinnamon rolls. We visited our daughter out of town and I made cinnamon rolls for our holiday celebration and for her to give to her neighbors as their neighbors exchange Christmas gifts, and they overproofed in the garage because it, it was a much warmer climate and the refrigerator was full. So we let them rise in the garage overnight like I normally do here, and the yeast died. So and they were still just as flavorful, but they were rather thin. What do you think? That looks beautiful. Much more rectangle than mine. So I'm going to use reuse this plastic wrap that I used earlier and just put this over these cinnamon rolls. There's the butter. Okay, here. I'll tell you what I do, and I don't know if it matters for this recipe, is before they before I wrap them, I smash them down so that they fill up the bottom of the pan and they rise up oh, instead you want to do of that. I've just always done it that way. I don't know. Does it make maybe, a difference? Maybe we should do half. We we'll do half. one, yeah. yeah. And so this one will be our test. Yeah, so this one we're gonna keep just like this. And then if you wanna put butter and cinnamon and sugar on that one, we can do that to the other one. I love doing these tests because normally I don't do a volume enough to do two different, the same recipe two different ways. But when we are cooking for a big group, Becky and I, then we can do the tests. Yeah. So while you're doing that, I will go ahead and use the same bowl. No need to make another bowl dirty. And I'm going to pull up the one hour yeast roll recipe. And I'm going to go ahead and make this yeast rolls. This is a rolls. joke. It's greasy now. It won't <laughs> stay on. Here. You wanna... I think I'll just use a knife. You have a... I have an offset knife. Should spatula. be in that drawer. Oh yeah, rubber spatula would work here. I got lots of those. I've only, used that pa I've only used that pastry brush for uh, marinade, you know, spreading oh, yeah. liquids. I've never tried to do butter with it, so it's not efficient for butter. It works well for uh, basting. Okay. okay, this looks pretty good, you think? <laughs> yeah, it looks great. So there is sugar in the dough, so that it doesn't have to be so much. Um, that's probably good the amount of sugar you put in there. Okay, I was wondering that. 
Yeah. Because I usually put a lot more sugar. Yeah, the, than the I dough saw is you. sweet too. There's a cup of sugar in the dough. Oh. Yeah. That would be yummy. And I do know it's very important to go all the way to the edge so that the rolls that are cut on the ends are just as good as the middle ones. Since you enjoy slicing them, I'll let you do that. Okay. I've mentioned before that we used to, growing up, have a huge Christmas Eve feast. And after everyone left on Christmas Eve, my mom would pull out Rhodes frozen rolls that she let thaw. It wasn't actually the rolls. It was the loaves. She would let that thaw on Christmas Eve. We would have the party. She would clean up from the party. And Christmas Eve night, my mom would roll out that roll dough recipe and she would make the cinnamon rolls, cut them, put them in the pan and put them in the garage because the garage was cold and she would let them rise in the garage overnight. And that's one of my favorite Christmas memories is making the cinnamon rolls for Christmas morning. And we would stay up really late and it was just so memorable to me. One of those like core memories, you know? And so for me, cinnamon rolls just scream the holidays. We never had them any other time of year except for Christmas morning. Well, that's not true. My mom never made them any other time except for Christmas morning. Costco many years ago used to make cinnamon rolls and cinnamon rolls are one of my dad's favorites. And so my mom sometimes would buy cinnamon rolls from the Costco bakery, but it just was so special making cinnamon rolls the night before Christmas morning with my mom. And so Today we're making cinnamon rolls. Now we're not making them on Christmas Eve. We're making them Christmas morning, but it's just as special and these taste absolutely delicious. So here we did find that the ones that we smashed down did actually rise better than the ones we left plain. Cinnamon rolls for Christmas morning are done and rising. We have two that we kind of smashed down a little bit. This one is our test. We didn't smash it down and we're gonna see how they bake up. While I was cutting those, my mom went ahead and warmed up some milk for me for the rolls. For the dinner rolls, we're gonna double this recipe. I have warmed milk here. And to that, I'm gonna go ahead and whoo! I'm gonna add a quarter cup of honey and then I'm gonna have to clean this jar. One two, three, four tablespoons is a quarter cup. And then we need to add our yeast. We need a tablespoon per recipe. And one of these packets is two and a half tablespoons. So I think total I'm gonna to need three packets because one tablespoon is three teaspoons. Did I say that right? One of these packets is two and a half teaspoons and a tablespoon is three teaspoons. So there's one. Yeah, I think I'm gonna need a total. These rolls come together really quickly. So I'm gonna mix that in. I'm gonna let that sit for just a few minutes. I have all the other ingredients out we need. So once this proves for about five minutes, then we can add everything else we need. My yeast is nice and bubbly, so I'm gonna add my butter and water. And then we're gonna start adding the flour. Now I normally do this in a KitchenAid mixer, but I don't think a KitchenAid mixer is going to be able to handle this amount of dough. So I figured I'll just do it by hand and that won't be a problem. So now I'm going to add my flour. That was four, five, six, and seven cups of flour. And then we're going to add our salt. Don't ever forget to add salt to your bread. I have done it a few times and my goodness, salt is an important part of bread making to add the flavor you want. So now I'm just gonna start by using this spatula to mix this together. And then I'm gonna get in there with my hands. I'm actually gonna need this for quite some time. So I'm gonna get my arm work out this morning, work off those cinnamon rolls we're gonna be having. Work up an appetite. And one way to make a little less mess when you're kneading by hand, is you can actually knead in the bowl. And I started with the lower amount of flour and I think I'm gonna need the whole amount of flour here. I'm just gonna start kneading.
We're waiting for our cinnamon rolls to rise and then we can bake them. These rolls are not for breakfast. These are gonna be for the dinner feast. And I figured this would be a good time to go ahead and get these made and rising so we can bake these. And when it's dinner time, we'll have some fresh rolls. I didn't add any more flour, but I've been kneading this for so long that it's nice and soft. So this is our dough here. I'm just gonna put this back in our bowl, cover it, and then we'll shake it in a few minutes. At this point, the only thing we need to cook for breakfast is the sausage, but we're waiting for my dad to pick that up. This, eggs. oh, and eggs. The cinnamon rolls are going to take probably an hour and a half to fully proof because this dough was cold coming out of the refrigerator. So if you had made the dough, rolled them out and proofed them, they wouldn't take this long to rise, but we're working with cold dough so that yeast needs to wake up and start working. And then I think I'm gonna go ahead and preheat the oven because these one hour dinner rolls don't take very long. And we're gonna bake these, I think 350. I need to recheck the recipe. I just did 30. Let's redo that bake, 350. Start that. My mom is gonna go ahead and fill the stockings right now. And I'm just gonna sit down for a few minutes and I'm not gonna clean the countertops right now because I'm gonna need the counters to be floury when I shape my rolls and then once we shape the rolls then i'll go ahead and get them nice and clean and my mom got the dishwasher unloaded and we reloaded it and so we're just moving along so the way that this day is working is we are going to have a breakfast with my immediate siblings and their kids and that's what the cinnamon rolls are for and that is what the sausage is for and the eggs are for and i got to my mom's house i think it was about 8 a.m to get all of this stuff prepared and then we're gonna have brunch. After we have brunch, then we are gonna open stockings and presents and then we are just gonna hang out and have fun and relax. And then dinner time, we are gonna have a big feast. We're gonna cook the hors d'oeuvres that my mom and I prepped yesterday. My sister is making the main dish and we're gonna cook the ham. And then we are gonna have a big feast with friends and family and that is going to be our Christmas feast. And so that's what these rolls are for. Toothbrushes, electric <laughs> toothbrushes, so much fun. It's brushing teeth, exciting. It was cute, those toothbrushes were a hit and the kids wanted to open those right away. And so once we have our big feast and then my sister planned a Christmas game that we played that was new this year, Everyone brought a $10 gift card. So we only do gifts for the kiddos. And so for the adults and the kids played this game, everyone brought a $10 gift card. We put them in red solo cups and we basically used ping pong balls and my sister decorated the solo cups in a Christmas tree. Everyone took turns throwing the ping pong ball into the solo cup and whichever solo cup your ball landed into it, that is the gift card you got. And my parents actually put in a couple, you know, extra ones that were more than $10 and it was really fun. Not super competitive, just a fun way, you know, to get an extra little Christmas treat. And so that was really fun. And here with the double batch of rolls, we are gonna get 24 rolls out of this double batch. My dad just got here with the sausage. So I'm gonna go ahead and cover this first roll batch of rolls let these rise for a good half an hour and then as soon as i get the second can of rolls rolled out i will go ahead and cook those sausages because those are something we could have cooked and just keep warm and just warm them up in the stove on the stove as soon as people get here the last roll is being shaped and now we can go ahead and i can get the counter clean but my mom turned the stove on to preheat so I'm gonna get this covered with a towel. This just has some flour on it and we'll let this rise. My mom's gonna go ahead and get the sausage links starting to cook because we can just warm these up when people get here. Yeah, Our, I have a plate with a paper towel ready for them. Perfect. Our cinnamon rolls look like they're getting pretty close. The ones that we did not press down look a little bit closer. It's hard to tell actually. I'm gonna go ahead and do the poke test to see. No, those need probably another half an hour. We turned the heat down because we knew it was gonna get pretty warm in here once people, 
arrive and we've got all the ovens going and the stove going. So it's a little bit on the colder side in here. So it might take a little bit longer for the bread to rise, which is fine. That's the one thing when you're cooking bread or yeast bread, it's more about looking at the signs of what the bread is telling you instead of just going off. You know, it says to rise for 15 minutes and then put it in the oven. If your house is cooler or warmer, it could take less time or more time. Now that we're done cooking, really, we're gonna get the counters clean. My dad's gonna empty the garbage and recycle. So we, if we need to throw stuff away, we can. And then since we've kind of done making the mess, he's gonna go ahead and clean the floors as well. My mom is getting the dishwasher loaded and we probably could run that, do you think, mom? And then yes. unload it before the yes. big party. I'm gonna get these counters clean. Yeah, do the counters first and then I'll do the floors after. Wait, Mark, there's one more bag of garbage. People will probably start getting here in about an hour or so. So we would like to have it nice and clean for when people get here. And we kind of wanted to get all that cooking, the bread and all that done before people get here. Now my sister, I made those rolls, but those rolls are more for if people want to make sandwiches with the ham, mom, do we need to get the ham going at some point? Uh, it just has, it's cooked, so it just has to be warm. Okay. Yes, and when the counter's clean, I'm going to bring the, the roasted oven in. Perfect. So the rolls are more for if people want to make ham sandwiches or the beef that my sister's making if they want to make beef sandwiches. But my sister is making some absolutely beautiful sourdough. Mom, what do you call that? I'll show you what it looks like. She sent us pictures this morning that's stunning. What is that? I don't know what it's called. It's some sort of twist bread and it's really beautiful. And she's doing sourdough, so I'm really impressed. And she's making focaccia too, I think. Yes, with uh, sun-dried air with tomatoes on it. Yeah. Because we did so much of the prep the day before, there was, really wasn't that much we had to do on this day. You know, basically cooking the sausage, making the cinnamon rolls, and the rolls was really the majority of the major things that needed to be done. And so now that those are done, my dad is going to go ahead and take over and he is going to go ahead and do the floors for us. That's something that he has always kind of taken on after we do the bulk of the cooking. For the ham? For the ham. My roaster doesn't have an on off switch. When you plug it in, it's on the lowest setting. Mm. So don't plug it in and out. Makes sense, good job. It definitely is a group effort for all of this to happen. It's not just my mom and I, there's a lot of other people that help out. Just the majority of what you see is my mom and I, but my dad does always come in and he tidies up the kitchen before the guests arrive. And then the son-in-laws are the ones that will do all the dishes after we enjoy our feast. And so it definitely is a group effort to pull off a Christmas feast like this. And it's just so fun enjoying the holidays with family. My dad is just finishing the floors and my mom has sat down and is starting to relax. She's going to actually work on a puzzle. And so Christmas morning has officially commenced. I haven't worked on a puzzle since COVID. I don't know. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. And Puzzles were really, popular at that point. This is a really cool puzzle for my folks' um, birthdays at 90 and 93. Uh, my sister put together a, a puzzle that's a collage of all the family members. Yeah, it's pretty cool. It is pretty fun. I haven't seen it put together yet. I've just seen the box. So that's what we're doing this year. So people will start arriving and we're going to start feasting. My mom said when my dad's done with the floor, she's going to get the fruit out so we can snack on the fruit and the fruit dip that we made. And I probably should put those cinnamon rolls and rolls in the oven. I just put an egg wash on the rolls. I think these cinnamon rolls have another about 10 minutes. They're not quite springing back yet. I keep checking those cinnamon rolls and thinking they're ready to go in, but not quite yet. We wanna make sure they're nice and proofed before we get them in the oven. And while we're waiting for those, my dad is actually vacuuming the floors and we are gonna get the ham prepped. So this is a ham, a spiraled ham, and it's already fully cooked. So all we have to do is warm it through. I've never actually done this before, so it's kind of fun to have my mom's guidance as I was sitting here doing this. All we're gonna do is remove the plastic wrapping from it and then cover it in brown sugar, put the lid on it and put it on about 250 degrees for I think it was three or four hours until it's warmed through. So pretty easy for our ham this year. 
We'll know once we bake this, but my mom and I think that smashing them, they are rising a little bit more even than the ones that we didn't kind of smoosh down. Floors are clean. So my dad's gonna get these rugs back in here. And now we're ready for party. I have always been intimidated by pomegranates. I love them. I didn't grow up with them. I've only had them as an adult. And I've always been intimidated because I've never seen anyone get the little juicy things out until I watched a YouTube. <laughs> and it's actually really quite easy. If you cut, like you would take the end off an orange, if you cut here, then it's sections. And you cut down the sections and kind of sort of pop it open. I'll show you. So this pomegranate is for the sweet potato arugula salad we're gonna have for dinner. Let me bring you in close so you can see. Oh, and I got close enough. Perfect. I love pomegranates. They just add a crunch to a salad. They're wonderful on fruit as well, or a fruit salad as well as a green salad. I cut the end off like this and you can see the sections, sort of like an orange in there. So if I take the knife and run it where the section is, Kind of like your sectioning citrus. That's a right big there. one. Yeah, that's a big one. And then this is a smaller one. So we looked at buying pre-peeled pomegranate and it was $4.50 for a little container and this pomegranate was $1.50. So we thought it was worth taking a few seconds to peel it ourselves. And then you just oh my goodness. it like that. Now, isn't that nice? Wow. Of course, then you have to pick the membranes out but there's one section, there's the next section. Oh, wow. So it's really not hard. I was intimidated for nothing. It's a very simple procedure. Now I have to master mangoes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, mangoes are hard. Do you want this mixed together or do you want them separate? Uh, it doesn't matter to me. We decided just to get this pre-cut one at Costco because we did enough cooking that this was gonna save us a few minutes of having to peel and cut all the fruit. And actually the, the price of one pineapple and the melons out of season was way more than the cost of just that. And we probably didn't need that much fruit either. Not when there's cinnamon rolls. Yeah. So that wasn't too difficult. One section down. I think this trick with the pomegranate is so clever. My mom is so cute. She always finds these cute little videos with tips and tricks to make little tasks in the kitchen that much easier. And so she is going to pick off all the seeds for our potato salad. We, I'm calling it a potato salad, but it's not really, when you think of, at least when I think of potato salad, I think of an American style mayonnaise based potato salad. This is not like that at all. It has arugula and I'll show you how we'll make it in just a minute but it is time to make the rolls. The cinnamon rolls are out of the oven, the sausage is cooked, and my family is about to arrive, and we are about to have a wonderful breakfast where we just sit down, enjoy freshly baked cinnamon rolls with frosting my mom made yesterday, so we didn't even have to make the frosting for the cinnamon rolls because that was done yesterday. My sister has arrived, and this is the main dish she is making. It's beef burgundy. I had dropped off some chuck roast the other day to her from the half a cow I had purchased from a local farmer and she used those to make the main dish. And breakfast is over, so my mom reset the table for our dinner feast that we're gonna have. So before we even got started today, she had grabbed out a couple tablecloths that she knew that she could just remove the ones from breakfast and throw a couple new fresh tablecloths on for dinner. And then we're going to put some goblets out for our cider. Now, this is some crab cakes that we had made yesterday, and they were a little bit loose. And so we went ahead and added a few more breadcrumbs and a little bit of hot sauce because we cooked one up before we cooked all of them up and noticed that it needed a little bit more binding agent and it needed a little bit of heat. So. My sister went ahead and fixed the crab cake dough, and then my sister-in-law, she is a fantastic cook, 
she went ahead and mixed up an aioli dip that we are going to dip the crab cakes in. My sister also wanted to make a caprese salad and I have never thought about doing caprese for Christmas and I think it's perfect because it's red and green and how cute is that? Because that's what my brother-in-law requested. He loves caprese salad. So here is the potato salad, I say with air quotes, because it's a salad with potatoes, but anyway, it's got a bed of arugula and then we had roasted some sweet potatoes with salt and pepper and oil and garlic powder. And we're gonna get that on the arugula. We're gonna to top with the pomegranate seeds that my mom had beautifully picked through earlier. And then we've got some goat cheese that we're gonna crumble on the top. And this salad was absolutely delicious. One of my new favorite salads. I have never thought to put roasted sweet potato in a salad before, and it is so phenomenal, absolutely a new family favorite. So here, the recipe called for pine nuts, but we decided to substitute some pumpkin seeds, and I actually like pumpkin seeds better than pine nuts. And then there is a dressing we're gonna put on, but we're gonna put that on right before guests arrive. One of our family traditions is every year my mom buys my brother the Guinness World Book of Records, and so it is a family tradition on Christmas to flip through the Guinness World Book of Records. I thought I would just share that random fun tradition with you. My family loves this book and we look forward to reading it every Christmas. So now people are starting to arrive for our big feast. And so we are gonna get in the appetizers that we prepped yesterday. We have sausage stuffed sweet peppers and jalapenos, and we have bacon wrapped figs with goat cheese in the middle. So my sister doctored up the crab cake and the consistency is perfect. And so she pulled out my mom's griddle and she's going to make just little crab cakes so everyone can have one or two crab cakes and she's going to cook them on each side. And those are going to be served with the aioli sauce that my sister-in-law made. And these turned out phenomenal. My brother-in-law and my sister and mom crabbed for these crabs over the summer. And so that's kind of a special thing. The peppers are out of the oven. We're gonna get these plated up. Now we decided not to do like a appetizer and then dinner. So we are actually serving all of these appetizers right along with dinner. That's something new we had never done before. My sister is now carving the ham. She is our designated carver. Every holiday, my sister is the one that carves whatever the meat is that we have. And now we are about to sit down and enjoy a beautiful Christmas dinner. And so we're going to top the caprese salad with a balsamic glaze. And then we are also gonna go ahead and dress our potato salad, which again, I can't tell you how absolutely delicious this was. And here is our family dinner. I will link these recipes down below. I wanna wish you the happiest holiday, whatever holiday you celebrate this time of year. I want you to have a good time with your family and friends. I am grateful for you. I'm thankful for you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being you. And I can't wait to see you next time. Bye, friend.